Hey, thanks for staying clicked in. This is um, such a beautiful story, and it's a beautiful story of hope. It talks about transitions. It talks about what the Spirit is truly interested in helping and assisting us. And um, I'm really excited to share it again in a more intimate format on my YouTube channel. So the story of Isla's Moon is this. First off, my daughter, my beautiful daughter, died two... 15 years ago in 2005 in a terrible car crash and she was absolutely conceived in love. We planned her, we wanted her, we desired her, we were, you know, doing the whole count the calendar, count the days, right, um, to conceive. And this one particular night, it was this beautiful, full August moon. And of course, 40 weeks later, Isla was born. She knew how important the moon was. So in this beautiful, um, story. I was just getting back to work after my daughter's passing. My neighbor up the street suggested that I just go out after work one night to hook up with some other ladies. They were doing like a jewelry party or a candle party. It was one of those get-togethers and she thought it would be a good idea for me to get out. Well when I got there, there was um, a mother of one of my daughter's friends in her class. So the woman admitted to me that right before she left the house that Alyssa, Isla's friend, had started to kind of get upset because she wanted to share a poem with her. And Alyssa said that the poem reminded her of Isla and she wanted to share. The woman was telling me about this and thought it was odd that she was running into me, but asked me for permission to send me the poem the following day. Got to work and the email came across. Well, it was this poem that the girl had received. And I think there was a, a a story that when the daughter was getting the poem, she was just kind of sit, sitting there and like, you know, looking out and writing down the words that she um, was thinking. So it was kind of channeled to her in a, in a sense, right? So here's the poem. I'm going to read it to you. Are you ready? It's beautiful. It says, if you are up at half past nine, when the moon is up in the starlit sky, you will know why the moon is there to shine a bright glory trail to a place where happiness is all there is. No wars, no guns, no need to fight. That's the place I'll be tonight. So back to my beautiful story. I got this message, it was beautiful. So I went right out on the internet and I happened to just kind of glance at maybe when the next full moon is. It was no coincidence that it was 10 years to the day, okay, that Isla was conceived, that August moon. So I put it in my calendar and life truly does move on. So a couple weeks later, I'm in my car, I'm finishing with a yoga class, I'm heading back to work, it's, you know, late at night, I'm coming around the corner from where I lived and I am looking for that moon. I, I, I text my boyfriend and I'm like, you know, look for the moon, tonight's the night, look out. I can't see it yet. So as soon as I come around the corner on, it, on the intersection, I look up and there is the most magnificent moon I've ever seen. It was this huge moon. And because of the Northern Lights, it had like a halo around it, a glittery halo. See where I'm going with this. Pulled off the side of the road just to really enjoy and share that moment and to realize there it was. Called my girlfriend, said, do me a favor, capture the moment. Can you get outside and take a picture of that moon? And I will absolutely call you when I get home. She did. When I got home after that beautiful moment, sitting there with my daughter, just acknowledging it and saying, thank you. I got it. I understand. I know you're with me. I feel you. Having that moment with her and letting it go. I got back onto the road, drove back home. First thing I did when I got through the door was to call my girlfriend and explain to her why I had her running out to take a picture of the moon. So I grabbed the poem out of my briefcase and I read it to her. I said, ah. And my friend says, Jeannie, do me a favor. Look at your cell phone and tell me the time that you actually called me. And I was not surprised to find out, and it was no coincidence, that it was 9.30. <laughs> So let me just share this with you. 
isn't enough, right? I think when those messages happen, we always want a little bit more. And what I've come to understand in my spiritual practice and assisting people through grief, we kind of get addicted to it, right? We get, we want more, you know, the Cardinal comes in, we want to see the Cardinal again. It's our connection to them. Here's what's happening from spirit, okay? You know, the same child that you lost, you remember taking them and teaching them how to ride a bike. They're on the training wheels of air, whether it's you or your daddy or mommy, doesn't matter, right? Someone's behind them kind of holding on to that seat, right? Assisting them and letting them learn what it's like to kind of be on two wheels. What happens, right? The person, the, the child who's riding the bike, you know, keeps keep glancing over, right? And of course you finally let go. When the child realizes you're not there, there's only two outcomes, right? The one that sees you're not there and freaks out and throws himself into a ditch, or the one who goes, okay, I'm on my own and keeps going. So I think a metaphor is that spirit truly does want to assist us. And so they show us these beautiful signs, but they don't want us to be addicted to them. <laughs> I think they do it just to support us so we can get on our own and move on with our life move on with our life and they get to move on with their life too. They're still with us, but they're not holding us up in our grief. See the little metaphor there? Right. When is it enough? Can you get a sign? And if you haven't gotten a sign yet, be patient, you will. I hope you enjoyed my story today. And the next time the moon comes up, will you do me a favor? Will you see your loved one in it and not Isla's moon, I, I think her message was for everybody. She knew I was gonna work with people. I've been doing this work for 15 years. That moon is everybody's moon. It represents transition. It represents timeliness. It represents life moves on. It represents love. It represents life. This is Jeannie Lynch. Thank you for sharing my, let me share my story. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have a story, share. Let me know. I would love to hear more of these stories. I'd love to do a nice collection of them. I hope it brought you peace tonight. Because that's the place they'll be tonight. This is Jeannie Lynch. Namaste.